Hey guys, Cortez, and today I'm going to be talking about starting your vintage collection and looking the part. Now, I've been getting a lot of requests to talk about vintage clothing since I know a lot of you guys are just curious on how to start your collection or where to look, so I'm definitely going to be covering different aspects of vintage clothing. Now, I'm not going to go into full detail, but I will get you guys started on just some of the basic vintage clothing that you want to look for in order to really begin your collection. So first off, I'm just gonna be talking about best places to be buying vintage clothing or clothing that looks vintage. Now, of course, you wanna go for the timeless outfits. So definitely some of the easiest things to get are gonna be the white and solid black t-shirts, which you can get at any retail store. I personally recommend going with the Ralph Lauren Polo shirts just because they have a thin collar and they make the perfect undershirt, which is the one I'm actually wearing right now. Some of the best spots though to look for your clothing are definitely going to be places such as thrift stores, vintage clothing shops, online on uh, websites such as Etsy, and of course department stores that have, that have clothing that's timeless. So one of the first best places to look for vintage clothing or reproduction vintage clothing are going to be your local thrift stores. And the reason why is because one, they're super affordable, and two, because since it is clothing that is used. Uh, you're most likely going to come across something that's vintage. On a few of my uh, on a few of my thrifting runs, and even uh, thrifting runs that my family has done for me, um, I was able to find this bowling shirt. I've been able to find actually different bowling shirts, Hawaiian shirts, and even uh, particular shoes. So that's definitely a good spot to go uh, look looking for clothes first. If you're looking to get into advanced shopping. For uh, vintage clothing, vintage shops are going to be the best just because they're going to most likely have the particular piece that you're looking for, especially if you've acquired uh, quite a bit of a collection. However, the only downside to vintage shops is because they are vintage shops and sometimes the clothing is pretty much either brought back to life or it's super rare, they're most likely going to jack up the price on it and so while well, you might find a piece that you've been looking for forever expect that price tag to be either in double or triple digits. Finally, online shopping isn't a bad choice either. In fact, I would say it's one of the easiest choices to go with just because it expedites the process. And if you are looking for a specific piece of clothing, you can easily search it up and find it. However, some of the issues with buying online is the fact that either you can get catfished online with a particular piece, like they'll leave out information on certain damage with the clothing, or you, you're not able to try it on, so you end up buying a piece of clothing that's either too big or too small. I myself ran into this when I purchased a Barracuda G9 jacket. It said on there that it was my size, but when I tried it on, it was just too tight and the material was different than what I was accustomed to. Personally, me, I prefer going to vintage shops and going thrifting just because when I go thrifting, I can find different items that are super affordable and that are pretty much, um, that I can try on as well, making the process easier. And at vintage shops, it's the same thing. Um, I can find a piece of clothing that I've been looking for and it will pretty much be in really good condition and I can try it on. So I would recommend buying in store first before looking online just because it's always important to really get your size, especially if you're gonna look vintage because with a lot of vintage styles, you want to have a bespoke or tailored look with them just because that would, that would have been the style at the time. Now the first category I'm gonna be discussing are pretty much just buying vintage shirts. Now some of the shirts that you can easily find while thrifting are gonna be things such as guayaveras, Hawaiian shirts, and bowling shirts. Sometimes if you get lucky, you can probably find a Pendleton board shirt or a Pendleton shirt in general. Those ones are highly coveted in the vintage community just because of their timeless look and the amount of time that they've been around. And so, you know, it never hurts to look. You can sometimes find them when you go thrifting, but with something like a Pendleton, you you can also find them at vintage shops as well. And usually, usually it's easy to find them at vintage shops. However, you can, the downside is the price tag. So that's something to keep in mind. Personally, me, I like looking for Hawaiian shirts because those are actually some of the easiest shirts to find at a, at a thrift store, just because they are, you know, in super abundance and they're kind of timeless in a sense but it always depends on the kind that you're looking for. You definitely want to find one that's kind of in a print style. Uh, personally me, I'm not big on rayon, but other people are just because it is a soft fabric. Um, since I 
since I iron my shirts all the time, rayon isn't exactly my best friend, but it really it depends on personal choice. Now when it comes to buying pants, I would recommend buying them new personally, especially if you're going to look for something like denim, just because uh, usually buying pants used isn't always the best idea. Uh, considering that if you're going for the 19, well for late 40s and 1950s look, you're going to want pants that are very blue looking. Uh, avoid faded ones unless you're going for a total 1980s look, then definitely get stonewashed jeans. But if, like I said, if you're going for the late 40s, 1950s look, definitely get blue jeans. Particular styles that you're going to want to look for that are new are going to be the 501s, which is the classic and true and tried style of most guys who are into the rockabilly scene. Or you can also go with the 559 uh, straight leg, uh, well, the straight wide leg look. It's a little bit baggy, but if you get it in the proper length, you can go for, you can definitely get that 1950s look. And I would say that this one is best for guys that are gonna be sporting engineer boots or uh, any form of boots that are looking at the greaser style. This one is perfect because the 1950s had a good boxy look and these jeans actually do provide that. So that's something to consider uh, when you're buying denim. Things such as slacks and chinos, you can buy new. You can also look for them at vintage shops as well. Important fabrics that you're gonna want for these are gonna be cotton or wool. Uh, wool if you want something that is very thick and durable for the winter. Cotton if, you want, if you're looking for something a little bit more breathable. But the good thing about these two fabrics is that they're, they're dependable and if stored properly, they can pretty much last you for quite some time. With, with those kinds of pants, you can either find them at thrift stores, the, the uh, vintage shops, or you can buy them new. So they're fairly versatile. There are also custom shops on there on, uh, on Etsy that do specialize in more of the 1950s look where it's got kind of a tight waist, but it's got a wide leg to give you that 50s boxy look. Moving on to men's shoes, uh, shoes are easy to find at, at thrift stores, especially if you're looking to get loafers or boots. I found at least, um, I found uh, my first pair of GH Bass penny loafers at a Goodwill for 20 bucks and it was a great deal, still in perfect, well, not in perfect condition, but since it is leather, you can easily restore it and pretty much bring it back to life with conditioner, polishing, and it's almost like it was, it's almost like you just bought them. Luckily with buying shoes used at thrift stores, they're already broken in and if they're leather, then you don't even have to worry about the hassle of getting them broken in because they're already taken care of. Uh, downfall though, if you guys are kind of a large size like me, um, I'm a size 12 in men's shoes. So it's a little bit more difficult for me to find used shoes since most of them are in size, I would say sizes seven through nine when I go shopping. So it really varies. Sometimes guys get lucky, so don't let it discourage you, but just keep that in mind. Uh, if you're looking to buy something like engineer boots or cowboy boots, you can easily buy those at a place like Boot Barn. That's where I've gotten at least a few of my pairs. Uh, sometimes I hear of guys going to vintage shops or thrift stores and they find their size and the style that they're looking for and so it works out. Plus the beauty about going to those shops is that once again you can try them on and you can see whether or not they fit with your uh, aesthetic. In terms of canvas shoes like uh, PF Flyers or Converse, I would recommend buying those new from places like Robert Wayne's or even their online retail shops just because uh, buying used canvas shoes is just a terrible idea. Uh, they're already faded by then and since canvas isn't really a durable material, uh, you're just better off getting them new. Finally, I'm going to talk about the last important clothing item, jackets. Now, the first jacket that I'm going to talk about that's probably going to be the easiest to acquire is going to be the hunting jacket. Now this you can find practically anywhere. You can even inherit them. Uh, the characteristics of a hunting jacket are that they are thick jackets, typically patterned with a tartan or plaid, and they also feature multiple pockets. Uh, inside lining is very typical of them, and usually the collars are going to either have a fur outside or they'll just be regular, depending on the maker. Um, but the issue with, with, with some of these jackets, if they're wool, you have to keep them specially stored, otherwise moths will get to them. So that's something to keep in mind. Letterman jackets are easy to find. They're the uh, they're very timeless, and the beauty about Letterman jackets is that you can pretty much find them anywhere. Whether you want to buy them used um, or new, it all depends. 
They are quite expensive though because they do have leather on them. Uh, however, you can also go with pleather options, which is personally not my favorite, and pleather is just not a very good fabric to use. Uh, or you can also use alternative cloth fabrics such as cotton or wool, depends where you would just get a basic two-tone jacket. Really, it's, it's just based on personal preference, sometimes even budgetary constraints, so that's something to keep in mind. But it's not, they're not bad jackets to own. Even if you do own one that is just fabrics, it's still, they still look pretty cool. Especially if you add, you know, uh, different iron-on uh, patches to them really dresses it up and gives it that vintage greaser look. So these are just my basic tips on looking for vintage clothing. Uh, hopefully you guys found them helpful. I'll have uh, some more clothing guides uh, posted up pretty soon. Um, and I'll go into more specifics on particular garments, eras, and even, and even styling them. Thank you guys for watching this video and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more. Watch